pleased to be here. Thank you, Dylan. I want to start with a short story. Three years ago when I joined B Lab, we were still in the pandemic and our community in New York City was hard hit like so many communities around the world. And amidst the chaos and uncertainty, an accidental fire also burned down my beloved church, Middle Collegiate Church, a community with a more than 400 year history in the East Village of Manhattan. I was married in that church to my husband, and more importantly, that church served so many community members in need. Finding ourselves displaced and seeking a home, I was with our pastor, Dr. Reverend Jackie Lewis, and many of our congreg congregants that day, standing in front of the church, holding love and fear simultaneously for what would happen and how would we rebuild amongst, amidst the growing uncertainty. Jackie, Reverend Lewis, led us with a fierce kind of love, a courage to help us get through this tragedy. The title of her new book is called Fierce Love and it's inspired by a philosophy of Ubuntu. The wisdom of knowing that I exist, I am, because you are. Ubuntu is a fierce love of humanity and a philosophy that recognizes our interconnectedness to get through tragedy and loss. Because in that moment, Reverend Lewis and so many of us needed the support of others to get through. Dylan said to me earlier, I might be taking you all to church, so I hope you're ready. <laughs> this experience has me thinking a lot about what the sustainability movement must need right now. And I'm in particular talking to you sustainability leaders and those of you that hold the title of CEO as I do. Having spent two decades in the sustainability movement, I'm here to share a loving critique. We may have unintentionally built a movement more on fear than on love. We may not like or love everyone, but when we learn to love the particular nature of humanity, we begin to understand how interconnected we are. When we structure business with love, when we use environmental, social, and governance principles and frameworks that inherently recognize the interconnectedness of nature and people. And when we move as a true collective with the knowledge that I am because you are, I believe we will overcome. We are living through a moment of incredible division. Nationwide, over the last year, we have seen an incredible increase of fear and vitriol in the courts and in the public square against affirmative action, against diversity, equity, and inclusion, against our beloved environmental and so social practices, because there's a fear that as more people benefit, others will lose. Last year, in 37 states, more than 197 pieces of fear-motivated anti-ESG legislation was introduced in state legislatures. Let's be clear, this effort is intentional, backed and funded by powerful interests. The anti-ESG campaign is a coordinated effort to dismantle so much of what has been created over the last 60 years since the civil rights movement and the environmental justice movement collided in response to discriminatory corporate practices. These attacks are not new. And I believe they are working because we have fallen out of love. We've become more disconnected from the problems that directly affect communities, especially the 100 people living under the poverty line in the United States. I believe we've been sold a lie, a lie rooted in fear by people who want to maintain power. Fear may be winning, and we, meet, we need more love right now. 
So if I think we need more love to sustain our movement, what do we need to become in order to choose love over fear? We need to be comfortable challenging the status quo. We need to believe that short-term impact on the bottom line is a small price to pay for long-lasting impact. We must be able to bravely dismantle policies, programs, and practices that reinforce inequality. We must not be terrified of each other. We must not let the images of floods and fires and scarcity and political turmoil overwhelm us. And while fear may be a natural response, a human response, the question I am posing to you all today is, where is the love? Bell Hooks author and activist says that when we choose love, we choose to move against fear, against alienation and separation. The choice to love is a choice to connect, to find ourselves in each other. And so I want to have us go back in time a bit to 2022, when the Supreme Court came out with the decision to overturn Roe v. Wade. In that moment, we saw fear, yes, but we also saw an outpouring of emotions and love for the freedom of bodily autonomy and privacy. And I want to give a shout out to Susan McPherson and the Don't Ban Equality platform that we so need right now because that fight is still not done. Let's fast forward then to the affirmative action ruling in 2023, when SCOTUS decided to overturn affirmative action in education. This has effect in business. And I ask, where was the outrage, protest, concern? Where was the love for people like me whose opportunities and livelihoods are now threatened by this? Our workplace is a refuge for workers. Where was the love for black and brown workers? What will this mean for LGBTQIA workers? What will this mean for people with disabilities who will also look to gain access and live better lives by fully participating in our economy? This is what is at stake. While imperfect, affirmative action put cracks in a system of walls, it lowered barriers of equity, and it made possible for so many of us to be leaders in a movement that was not always inclusive and is still struggling to be. The dominant narrative suggests to me that companies come first, planet second, and people come last. We need a movement to change our mental models and our priorities. And that movement is felt in the B Corp community. 8,000 of them worldwide are living examples of a love proposition. 25% of all B Corps are fully owned by their employees. 69% of B Corps offer bonuses or profit sharing to non-executive workers. B Corps are one and a half times more likely to certify companies under fair trade practices, doing better for their suppliers. We're also five times more likely to have supplier diversity programs in place for underrepresented populations, and we have protected over a million hectares of land about the size of Jamaica and diverted over eight million tons of waste from landfills or incineration. We're driving climate action with the principles of inclusion and belonging, as well as reconciliation, community restoration, and other actions rooted in love. They're fundamental principles of our movement. And at B-Lab, we've also come to recognize that we must learn from how indigenous wisdom and the black experience and the experiences of frontline communities must be respected and listened to if we're to get this right. <laughs> Collective action is our call. And it's the key to our success. Being a B Corp today is not just a banner of pride and about continuous improvement and performance and our beloved uh, governance, stakeholder governance policies. It's about acting beyond your four walls so that your actions have actual systemic impact on the broader system. It's about connection and it's also about finding ourselves 
in each other. So here's an invitation. This year, B-Lab is mobilizing our community over, over 2,500 companies in the United States and Canada to show that love and business are not contradictory. Labor, business, state and city officers, climate and social advocates are coming together and building powerful coalitions. We must not be afraid. We're building a collective offense in support of purpose-driven business, and our narrative must stretch beyond the B Corp community to be effective. And so my invitation to you is to download our pro ESG messaging guide at wearebcorps forward slash messaging. In it, we share messages that are working and appealing to both sides of the aisle. These are messages that are hopeful and they're ones based in love, not fear. And they're demonstrating that business can create high quality jobs, that we can operate with transparency, that we can lead into and create cleaner and more sustainable communities while turning a profit. Poll after poll, the public wants corporate responsibility and nothing less. I believe that together we are a force to reckon with when we lead with courage. Even if we believe our impact may not be seen for generations to come, what we do today matters for tomorrow. And at the end of the day, may love win. Thank you.